Hey, what's going on guys? Vega here from Serpent X Special Forces and what is the first thing you should do when you get a GPU secondhand or you bought a GPU from the secondhand market? Well, the first thing that I like to do is to tear down the GPU. Now, I obviously did some preliminary tests to, to tell you, to get the information that I'm about to tell you, but as you can see, this GPU looks pristine. Looks really good. The owner uh, looks to have taken really good care of it on the outside. However, I like to do a teardown to check the state of the paste, the thermal paste. Uh, this one does have thermal pads in the back side. This is a RX 5700 from Gigabyte, non-XT model. Uh, so I want to check the thermal pads, but also I want to check the PCB. I want to see if there's something going on. Uh, maybe there's a short, any burnt areas on the PCB. So we're just going to switch over and do the teardown. I'm just chilling and relaxing, not trying to go crazy with this. So we're just going to go ahead and make it happen and start working on this GPU. Obviously, very simple. You got, let me show you this real quick. So we got four main screws plus an additional three, as you can see. And that will release the heat sink from uh, the, the back plate and PCB. But then these little white circles or silver areas that you can see on this back plate, there's two here and then there's three. One up here, one down here, and then one right right here. So uh, once we get this separated, the back plate's gonna come off with it and we're going to have to uh, obviously remove some more screws to take off the back plate and check the thermal pads on the back side. Uh, but this is just standard procedure for what I like to do. Everybody has their own way of doing things. I even use a toothbrush. Like if there was, this one had a lot of dust, I would use a toothbrush to actually, you know, clean the PCB because you know that dust buildup gets pretty bad, especially if you're running these GPUs for a long time and nobody takes care of it. Like I said, the, it looks pristine. The previous owner obviously had to have cleaned it, but why is the thermal, uh, why, why is the back plate getting so warm with no workload on it whatsoever? Also, uh, it randomly will disappear from device manager. So all in all, uh, you know, maybe it's pristine because the previous owner did something to it. Now, if it's sticky like this, you got all the screws off, but when you try to lift up on it, it's not, it's not coming loose. Double check, verify there's nothing holding it down. Like sometimes there would be some IO screws that might hold it down, but that's not the case here. But we're gonna verify that there's nothing else holding it down. No other screws that we may have missed. There's not, just the back plate screws. And actually there's only four back plate screws but you can give it a little twist, not too much. And you see that, that broke that, broke that, that thermal paste application. This seems really fresh. Nope, it's the old stock thermal paste. Now, when you're pulling your heat sink off, okay? Let me see here, where can you see it? When you're pulling your heat sink off, there's obviously fan cables connected to this. Uh, probably a fan and RGB strip. Let's see here, so there's one fan. No, it's just fans. No RGB on this one. Or maybe there might be. Yeah, right here, so this LED, the Gigabyte logo that's up here, is what lights up. So the point being is, is you wanna be very careful while lifting up the GPU. And try to, try to disconnect any connections be very careful in this case I don't really need to disconnect the LED um, I can leave it just like this and work on it that's one way to get around it because sometimes these connections can be really indifferent uh, you can go ahead and try to remove it what I would suggest is just be careful you don't want to break any uh, SMDs on your GPU or PCB and you most certainly don't want to break the cables or connections where the fan or LED light might be. So these connectors right here, 
when you're pulling on them, you want to pull from the actual connector. You see this little slot? You can sometimes use a little flat head and pry it up or away from the PCB on that. But you don't want to pull from the wires itself. If you pull from the wires, you're going to pull the pin out. Uh, same thing with this one. You can see the little ridge in the middle. You just want to be careful. Pry up with the connection, not with the wires. You don't want to rip the wires off. Now, these pads are not oily, so that's a good sign. We can see here that the memory modules are not oily whatsoever. PCB looks pretty good. PCB does not run the full length of the back plate, but that's fine. You could also see where on the XT model there would have been another 8 pin right here, but this is a single 8 pin only. The non XT model. And then, of course, the thermal paste is very dry. That, that's some very dry thermal paste. Um, to test out the memory, to test it out, what I like to do is a sticky test. And I tap it, that's very sticky. So it's still good, still got moisture. And just tap around. Feeling how everything's going. Now one of the thermal pads on the far end here did rip, as you can see. But that's no biggie. Not a not a not an issue at all. Yeah, it's not a biggie at all. So we just need to grab some um, rubbing alcohol and re get rid of the old thermal paste. I'm gonna put in the best of the best. I mean I got it. 100 bucks for this dang thing. So we're going to go ahead and apply some Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut Extreme. Really expensive, comes with spatulas and all. So let me go grab some rubbing alcohol to clean this off. I also like to use, um, on the iFixit kit, you can use anything you can. Um, but a little plastic tip, um, usually used for like prying devices up. But I like to scrape off the thermal paste. Let me just get some paper towels and rubbing alcohol and get that all set up for us. All right, so as you can see, I got my isopropyl alcohol. 70% will do. 99% um, is even better, or whatever the, the higher 90 number is. But anything would do. You can use coffee filter, obviously paper towels. Um, to get the original thermal paste off, but because this is so dry, I literally can just scrape it off. Um, obviously, when you're doing this scrape technique that I'm showing you right now, you wanna be careful, uh, especially on the GPU itself, because you do not want to scrape off any SMDs whatsoever. Just be very careful. And I'll show you what I mean here in just a second. Just bear with me. Let me, uh, it's coming off very easily. It still has some moisture in it. It's not too bad. It still had some. So I, I, it's nothing, nothing too crazy. So what I mean by SMDs, let me switch back over, is if you look around the GPU core or die itself, there's these little components. See the little gold components? That's what I mean by SMDs. Obviously there's a bunch of them all over this PCB. You just want to be very careful not to break off anything. Once we get this all cleaned up, we're going to uh, verify, look around the PCB in some good light to make sure there's no burnt uh, items, capacitors, bulging, you know, just anything that looks out of place. Doing anything with a fresh start is a good, it's a good starting point. And what I mean by, I said start there a couple times, what I mean by a fresh start is you just got this GPU it hasn't been uh, with you the full life cycle or from the start of its life cycle. 
So you just want to verify and know that everything is good to go. Everything, you know, you got good thermal paste, good thermal pads. Everything looks, uh, you know, good connections, whatever it may be. All right, so now that I got the thermal paste scraped off, we can go ahead and clean it up with some rubbing alcohol, very simple. Uh, take a little piece. I'm just ripping this off so I can keep the thermal, the old thermal paste away. But I like to take a small piece of paper towel, put some rubbing alcohol on it. Start with the heat sink first. And you're not gonna get all the stain off. Don't worry about that. So I didn't see anything that stood out to me, but this thermal pad on this guy, this bigger one right here, I moved it over a little bit because it was kind of catty cornered. And if you can see it, it wasn't making full contact. So that's why I moved it over a little bit. Um, and I already put the back plate back on. It's very easy to put the back plate back on, uh, at least with this Gigabyte card, because the way these uh, these mounting holes work is that the PCB kind of just fits right in there like a, pe uh, a puzzle of some type. Uh, obviously, when you're torquing down uh, components, it, compared to back in the day, as fragile as they were, they're not as fragile now, so it's not a big deal. But, you know, just, just torque it down hand tight. You don't need to cram it in or, or, or really crank down on it. Just get it hand tight. It will stop you. Most of them will will stop you or have tension screws on it or springs like the, the main four uh, that, you know, secures the back or the heat sink to the core. But I get the back plate back on first, right? So thermal pads look good front and back. Not a big problem. Oddly, uh, I do not I do not see any markings on this GPU core. It's probably just an AMD thing or an NVIDIA thing to mark it. So, but here's the thermal paste. Uh, I know this video is a little bit long, guys. Thank you for bearing with me. But I just wanted to go over the basics. You know, when you're when you're buying these GPUs secondhand, you just want to make sure that everything is up to par. That everything is just good to go uh, getting your own eyes on it even if you never done this before getting your own your own eyes on it uh, would would set your mind at ease and, and just help you out you know just just replacing a the thermal paste is just super beneficial in my personal opinion now this is non-conductive so it's okay for a little bit to go over. Just don't want to get crazy with it. Or get too crazy with it at least. Just spread it around. Uh, most thermal paste is just a tube. So you would just squeeze it out. Uh, you can do uh, what Gamers Nexus you know, recommends on the mod mat, depending on the GPU or the size of the GPU core. You know, that, that hex. Uh, or X you always want to make sure you get all the original thermal paste off and Put this bad boy back together plug it in your system and you're good to go But uh, for those of you who have stuck around through most of this video. I really appreciate you hanging out I'm just gonna put this guy back together always double check and verify That these GPUs are especially secondhand just make sure that they got good application of thermal interface whether it's thermal paste or thermal pads you want to connect your various connectors we are connected and then what I like to do is I like to flip it upside down like that just to make sure the wires route correctly because this wire see this wire over on this far end was getting stuck on the heat sink and boom there you go all the holes line up screw it in, put it back together. I like to start off with the core first before I start on any accessory uh, screws. I don't torque it all the way down, I just get it started in all four corners because we're gonna wanna tighten in a hex um, or a cross, cross hatch pattern. Just get it started. These do have little springs on them. 
So you're not gonna need to go too crazy as far as torquing them down. The springs will help you out actually. All right, so now that we got all four of these started, that's good. I like to check my other screws over here, the screw holes for the other, you know, just make sure the holes line up basically is what I'm trying to say and, and doing a horrible job at. Get those started as well. And then once I have these started, again, starting with the core, I just tighten it down. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two. Just real quick, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two. All right, so now we bought them out on that one. We bought them out on that one. We bought them out on that one. There we go. Just go over it just very loosely with your hand, you know, just two fingers, just tighten it. You don't need to crank down. You don't need to use your whole fist. That should be more than enough tension. And with a better application of thermal paste, what I'm hoping for is that the heat sink will draw most of that heat towards the front of the GPU instead of towards the back, right? So when we have thermal pads on the back side, that helps with memory thermals, but because the back plate only has so much surface area, you know, it can only absorb so much heat. If you have a fan on it, that will help dissipate it, but it can only do so much. Um, if I can have most of the heat go through the heat sink or the plate, that cold plate that I was telling you about and bring it out towards the front, that would be better. And the best way to do that in a circumstance like this, if you had a GPU that memory thermals were really hot, like I did with the 3080, is I replaced the stock thermal pads with much more higher efficiency thermal pads, like 17 watts per meter Kelvin. Uh, the, the thicker they are, those thermal pads are really hard to find, but they are available um, if you look. Um, I actually will try to find you guys some in various sizes, 1 mil, 0 .5, 0 0.5, 1 mil, 1.5, 2, 2.5, and 3, if I can find them. A lot of them are out of stock, especially with the 3000 series and 3080 running so hot. But check the links in the description for those below. I'm going to hook this up to the AMD system and see if we can get it to run a little bit better now that we replace the just the thermal paste. But a standard inspection would we'll, we'll just you know, help you identify issues. Uh, routine maintenance will help you prevent issues. Every now and then, every couple years, check the thermal paste, make sure it's not dry, uh, replace it, you know, check the thermal pads, make sure they're not drying out, and replace it. M routine maintenance can help your GPUs last a long time, and since you bought a GPU in the secondhand market, who's to say that maybe you won't sell it next time and make your money back or then some? But that's going to do it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I know this video was super long, but uh, on the way out, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button or the like button. Subscribe for more content like this, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.